and welcome Eagle fans to the Weekly Coaches Show. I'm Daniel Kirkendall. I'm here with Coach Stephen Fitzhugh as we look forward to uh, uh, to week two as we face uh, General Trass and kind of look back at week one uh, against Caldwell. Our Weekly Coaches Show is brought to you and to us by McDonald's. All right, Coach, week one's in the books. 42 to nothing victory against Caldwell on the road. So you start your season off uh, 1-0 and with a, with a road victory and uh, – you know, I guess the first thing I want to ask you is, are, did, after that game, are there areas, and I'm sure there are, that you noticed uh, that you can build upon moving forward in the season and then some areas that you, uh, you know, that can use some improvement? Yes, no, there's no doubt. I, I was real pleased with our effort, number one. I thought we gave great effort. Um, there are plays that, yeah, was, you know, you evaluate film, you see everything. And so, uh, but things that, that I thought were very positive that, you know, help make a successful football team. We had zero turnovers on offense. We had very few penalties uh, throughout the game. I think we had four uh, for the whole game. And so uh, those are things that are critical uh, when it comes to the game of football is don't beat yourself. Another positive thing uh, defensively, uh, we only gave up one big play. I consider a big play uh, a 12-yard run. On on or or a sixteen yard pass uh, that it, that our opponent gets, and so we only gave up one pass uh, that was over sixteen yards, and so that was the only big play. And so uh, all three of those are things that that are positives that we can you know build upon. And, and again, guys, that's what we need to do each week: take care of the football offensively, eliminate foolish penalties, don't give up the big play on defense, and so. Uh, those are areas that, that, again, will help you have a, a great season. And so, um, again, by no means do we play a perfect game. Uh, they're, they're, we still had missed tackles, missed blocks, uh, things like that that we can come back and correct. But I definitely liked the start, the energy, the passion that our guys played with. Uh, again, just going out there and playing uh, OCS football. That uh, We had – Nine new starters on defense and eight new guys on offense. And so uh, for them to go out there, we emphasize that it's your turn now. Uh, your turn to ter- carry the torch. Your turn to be wearing the gold on Friday night. And I was I was very happy with the way the guys went out and responded to, to their opportunity. And, and, again, that's something that we can build on because uh, Caldwell had a big offensive and defensive line. I mean, they, they outmatched us a lot uh size wise and so uh again i think that's a good confidence booster for our guys to know that okay we've played a big you know offensive defensive line and so uh again those are all things that we can build on going forward yeah you know this is a and this team was fun to watch i mean i watched him in the scrimmage watched him at practice watched him at the jam and then had a chance to watch him in week one and this is a a, a team that's easy to cheer for they're fun to watch and uh, when you look at the roster, we're not really a young team. You mentioned all the new starters, but we're not really a, a young team. There are some seniors who have really kind of stepped into the role, uh, like you mentioned, to kind of carry that torch. And and I do want to address that because uh, last week you talked about, you know, Caldwell. We talked about, um, you know, their their approach to the game would be to run the football. But instead, it looked like uh, that's what that's what we did. We ran the football, starting off with – with Macon Leonard as a senior. I thought Macon had a great game. 17 carries, 98 yards, and one touchdown. Luke also had two rushing touchdowns, and Jude Turner had uh, a a touchdown. But early in the game, Macon seemed to set the tone. Um, He ran well, and it kind of opened up the rest of the offense. uh... It it did. It did. Um, You know, again, there's a senior that, that, you know, had a big night and uh, several offensive linemen up there that were getting their first starts. Uh, you know, paved the way for him. And then, you know, Voyon had had close to 100 yards receiving in his first start. Uh, Cooper getting his pick six, yeah. you know. And, and so uh, you, you love to see that for, for those seniors, you know. Uh, Andon Melton started in the secondary, did a great job. And, and again, just go on and on. But, but our seniors are making the most of that opportunity that they have waited for. And, again, I just – you have a tremendous amount of respect. So often in today's world, it's uh, I want instant gratification. I want things now. If I don't get it, I quit. And, and these seniors, uh, you know, we have 11 seniors that, that they have waited their turn and uh, are, again, making the most of the opportunity that they have out there. So that's just 
Great to see you guys that stick it out, and they're making great memories. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, Cam Vuillon at almost 100 yards receiving, just under. And, uh, you know, I watched that uh, our receiving core, which primarily consists of Cam Vuillon and Luke Edwards and Patrick Turpin. So those are kind of the three guys that are out there. And on paper, you know, they're all kind of clones of each other. I mean, they're six. Six one, you know, 185, 190 pounds. You know, they all, uh, maybe some a little lighter, a little heavier. But, you know, you, you got some, some size out there on the outside. I'll t- what I was impressed with with our wide receivers was the yards after the catch. They, there's a toughness about that group that I think uh, is, is kind of, you know, servicing after the first game. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree. So that is, that's uh, fun to watch. And, of course, Luke, you know, that was one thing watching him, you know, He's completely different right now than he was last year at this time. Last year he stepped in, nervous, jittery, and and, and he's stepping in. He's a leader now, and, and I thought he, he kept great command of the offense and just uh, the poise and, and competitive fire that he had. Again, just uh, totally different what a year does for a person. And, and like I said, he stepped out there and, uh, you know, ran well, threw well, and, and, and again – uh, boy, he battled that foot injury for a long time, but I, I think he showed that uh, there there are no you know hindrances from that at all. So uh, just excited about you know again the way that that group went out and executed the yeah, first ball game. So Luke was was fourteen to twenty five for two hundred and four yards and had the had the touchdown to uh, to Cam Vuillon. I thought he did a great job of commanding the offense. Um, like you, like you said, one more thing about offense that I noticed, and, and you, you alluded to it, is, is the way the offensive line played. So Stacy is kind of in the center. Micah Mosier is on his right side. Is that right? Yes. Yes, right side. And then Bo on the Gre- left. Well, you know, and Bo Gregory's and Bo a tackle. Gregory's a tackle. On the right side. Yeah. And then on the left side, you have uh, John Turner, who got a new number this week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, he switched to the jersey, so it looks like he's going to be a staple on the offensive line. He, he is. We're going to keep John there. I mean, he is a natural at guard. And, yeah. again, just, just team attitude that I'm willing to do where, whatever the team needs me to do. And, uh, you know, when he filled in there in the jamboree and, and stuff, just watching film, it was like, wow, he is a natural. And uh, and so, yeah, John's a, a staple there and out that left guard. And, of course, Jackson Mann mm-hmm. at left tackle. Yeah, is Cooper playing tackle some? Uh, Cooper's – hey, we're going to keep him as tight in nice. right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. So – I, one thing I noticed about this group was in the first half they did a good job of opening the holes up, but in the second half to finish the game just to close it out, I think Luke's second touchdown run, you know, five or six yards out, and he just went in untouched. I mean, it just just opened up. So uh, big kudos to our offensive line, the way that they've played this week, and they're they're stepping into their role. On the other side of the ball, man, uh, we don't do an official player of the game, but I think last week I may have, uh, if it was up to me, I may have gone with Cooper Russell. Cooper had uh, seven tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss, one fumble recovery, and one interception for a 34-yard return for a touchdown. A senior. You know, man, he is holding down that middle linebacker position. He is. He's a a great leader to have right there in the middle. And, again, just a guy that has waited his turn and been patient and has worked hard and done everything that you want a a kid to do. And, And so, again, to see him go out and have that kind of success in the first ball game, uh, that's that's just really exciting. Yeah, so, th- I mean, Caldwell was going to try to run the ball at the middle. And, you know, uh, first two drives, like Coop, it seemed like Cooper got maybe five of his tackles in those first two drives because he was he just really kind of slammed the door on he their, did, their game He did, he did, because really on the first play of the game, they they blocked things well, and they had a, a huge hole, and uh, Cooper shot through the, the crease right there in the middle and, and uh, dove to make a, a, a great tackle that, you know, prevented a huge play from happening. Yeah, and it really allowed your defense to uh, to really swarm the ball. That's another thing I noticed about this team. That, that's, you know, looking at this game, I mean, it was a full team effort, top to bottom. And, and the way the linebackers and the, and the defensive line swarmed to the ball, you know, along with the defensive backfield, and I want to talk about them uh, in just a minute. Um, your defensive backfield, you mentioned Andy Melton, but you have Eli Red and Aiden Eldridge. Again, seniors, this is probably – uh, I would say, you know, senior heavy as far as a group. Of, uh, and you get to work with the defensive backs all the time. But one interesting thing about these guys is, one, I think they're a matchup problem for other teams. You know, two, they're dedicated. I mean, they're on defense. Like, these guys are – how long has it been since you've had your defensive backfield and your wide receivers it, that don't do the it, same? It has been <laughs> – I don't know if I can remember a time, to be honest with you. And so that is – that has been a unique situation that – 
Uh, and then at our other corner, uh, you know, Barrett Freeland came in yep. the season uh, as a starter there, and, and he's been out, you know, the last few weeks. And, and Connor Robinson and Tristan Raymond have been alternating that spot. But there again, all of the DBs, none of them are starting on offense. And so it allows us a, a lot of keeping them fresh. It yep. makes a difference. And then Cam Voyon's that extra mm-hmm. DB that we bring in at times. Uh, but, but yeah, it's really made a big difference. Like I say, you keep them fresh. And so, uh, that, you know, that's a great situation to have. Yeah. And so when, you know, um, you know, Eli Red, he had a big hit in the scrimmage game. I mean, he's a physical player and, and Andon's a physical, uh, player on the outside. And Aiden, um, is probably the most experienced player on defense, um, you know, that you Without have. Without a doubt. Yep. So it's good to have those guys. And, uh, and like you said, if, if you got to rotate, um, you know, a fourth, it's good because Tristan Raymond's a freshman, so you, you feel good putting him out there with, uh, especially with the seniors around him that can help help uh, direct him a little bit. Um, you know, you've got one way starters in the defensive backfield and at wide receiver. Again, that's just unusual. I don't know if I've seen that since I've been here. Um, you actually don't have it. It seems like there's not as many two way starters as there has been in the in the past. One of those guys is John Turner that we that we talked about. And I and what I want to ask about John. You mentioned how he just slid right into that guard position. He's natural at it. Uh, but how much has his experience as a as a running back helped him to be able to, to, to play that position? Well, you know, definitely. I mean, <laughs> he has seen what they, the, the, the different view. And so, again, he understands uh, what those combo blocks and the angles and everything yeah. like that. So uh, I think that's definitely helped him out, you know, having that experience. Yeah, and it's just like you mentioned, though, just the uh, – the the team mentality of him to say hey you know you know whatever it takes and uh, I'll, I'll I'll do whatever I can to help this team win. The other one's Stacy Shaw. Okay, so Stacy, I think last year he played both ways a little bit, um, but his conditioning became an issue at times. Uh, but I saw him out there on the field an awful lot on on uh, on last. He, he's night. in better shape this year than he was last year. Yeah, uh, and um, you know, but he yeah he did a great job at nose, great job at center, so. Uh, you know, and he's like I say, he's in better shape this year than he was last year, and uh, just a force to deal with on both sides of the ball. Yeah, so that's that's those are really the um, unless I'm I'm missing somebody, but I think well Cooper at tight end, but um, but your two way starters, that's about uh, um, all I can yeah. think of, and so that's that's kind of nice. It also gives you a chance to uh, to coach up those guys, and you know, in the series when when they're uh, when, when we're on offense or we're on the de- on defense. All right, special teams, Turpin. Um, got out there and did the punt returns the other night. I thought he did a good job. I think he had one really nice uh, uh, punt return. How's that going? It was great. I mean, just the courage of I'm going to field the football. And, um, you know, he fielded, I think, three punts, and, and it, you know, totaled up for 30 to 40 yards. But uh, he does a great job of there's a calm, level-headed guy back there that's going to focus on the ball and, and keep his attention, uh, not be distracted by things. And, and again, that's valuable. I mean, there's so many teams that, that a kid gets scared and they're going to let the ball hit the ground, and then it may roll another 10 yards. And so uh, when you can gain 30 to 40 yards, as we did the other night on returns, it just helps your field position. And so uh, he did a great job with that. Yeah, and Gavin, of course, did a great job with his kickoffs. Um, you know, the uh, I think he only had one punt. It was a 30-yard punt, but it was with a – I think it was with a short field, if I remember right. But um, – Right before halftime, okay, we we put Caldwell. Caldwell was in a punting situation, mm-hmm. okay. So they punt the ball; it's deep, and then there's a penalty on the play, and they scoop back, and they're punting from their own end zone. All right, coach, were you trying to set up a free kick there? We we were, and and uh, yeah, you know that was we were go for the block, but mm-hmm. but if we don't get the block, try to get that fair catch, and it that was one you know just kind of got lost in the lights, misjudged that one. Um, but, and one thing, you know, we're going to do a better job of in that situation, again, kind of, you know, caught us off guard right there at the beginning, but, uh, you know, we're going to, to be better prepared for that situation. It's a lot on, on Turpin to go, Hey, wherever that ball goes, you go get it, Mm -hmm. you know? So what we're going to do if we get in that situation is let's put three guys back there, uh, to where, you know what, we got the entire field covered. And and regardless of which way that ball goes, uh, and so yeah, we were we were going to try to do that free kick if we had opportunity. But yeah, Gavin, he he played a great game. That's such a weapon uh, when you can do. I think we did five different kickoffs. I think so he, too. People people don't realize 
uh, but there's so many teams, they just go out there and kick it, and they don't know where it's going to go. But we have a kicker that, you know, the sky kick. They fumbled that. That was a turning mm-hmm. point in the game because we scored also went up 14-0 to after we just scored a touchdown previously. So uh, that was a valuable weapon. And, and then the other times that he puts it into the end zone. Um, and then if we see a gap right there, he's able to drop it where we want to and kind of leave them confused as to who's going to get the football. So uh, Gavin did a great job, and that is that's just a – a valuable weapon. Yeah, he's fun to watch too. You know, I know there's probably probably going to be opportunities where we get to see him. I mean, hopefully, maybe try along. You know, forty plus. Oh, no, there's no yeah, doubt. Yeah. Forty. We're going to go fifty plus. Fifty plus. There's no doubt. I saw him knocking knocking him in from about fifty two yesterday at practice yeah. with, with room to spare. Yeah. So uh, he tried a uh, uh, he tried a free kick from. <clears throat> yeah, he'll he'll. I, I feel confident he'll hit fifty plus this year. And All again, right. I, that's not putting pressure on him. No, nope. because he can do it. Yeah, and he's he done it. it. Yes, yes, he he's a lot stronger right now, and and uh, and so again, I, I think that opportunity will come, and I think he'll he'll be able to do that this year. All right, so um, eighteen first downs for OCS versus six to uh, to Caldwell. We averaged uh, around four yards a carry. They averaged less than one yard a carry. I think they ended up with twenty net rushing yards. So uh, you know, just fantastic job. Four rushing TDs, a uh, five rushing, t- four rushing TDs that we had a passing and interception return, five of ten on third down conversions. Uh, you mentioned the four penalties. Um, I, do, I don't think there were, there were, I don't think there were any pre-snap penalties on offense, um, if I remember right. I don't remember what the penalties were, but um, that was good to see. You know that you, I mean, you don't want to have ten penalties. I remember right. last year we started out with a couple games with double-digit penalties, so that was good to see. Uh, but the turnovers. Um, to, you know, two takeaways. No, um, we actually had four, four counting the kickoff. Yep, yeah, counting the kickoff. Yeah, four takeaways uh, to zero giveaways. Mm-hmm. And you you talk about it, and it's it's like the the secret to winning football games that people, I guess, you know, don't really want to recognize. But if you win the turnover battle, you're going to win games. And so, is that something that you that you guys work on in practice? We we do. I mean, we talk about it all the time that that we take care of the football, do the drills. Uh, again, as receivers catch the drills for practice, carry the football high and tight, do the little things that that uh, help secure the football. And then de- defensively, we emphasize get the football. Our JV kids this year, this week, you know, Cooper Thomas is one that uh, JV game. I mean, it's intentional mm-hmm. trying to strip the football out. That uh, he had two takeaways in the JV game the other night, and so uh, again, it's an attitude, and it's it's something that that we're going to emphasize and uh, makes a big difference in ball games. Yeah, well, I'm, this team is fun to watch and and, uh, and easy to cheer for, so I'm excited about this uh, this upcoming week for a couple of reasons. One is it's week two. You know, I love it when we have a football game on Friday night. Um, the other th- reason I'm excited is because we, we don't have to travel. That's a, that's, <laughs> that's a great thing. Yeah, that's I, a great thing. So how'd that work out? Well, I, as I was on the radio interview Friday night after the ball game with, with uh, radio station, they, they mentioned that General Trass had to s- suspend their game on Friday night because of the, the electrical issues with their stadium lights and stuff like that, and they were continuing it on Saturday. So uh, I ended up – Coach Toriano Wells at, at General Trass, I have a lot of respect for him – I mean, two years, three years ago, they were in the state semifinals. I mean, he he took over a program that was 0-10 year after year, and and he has built it into a program. He takes pride in what they do. Uh, I mean, painted the stadium, new scoreboard, new uniforms. I mean, Coach Wells does a great job at at General Trask, but I knew that they had had those issues with the stadium lights. They had played a mudslop game last week uh, that – you know, got on the field on Friday night and Saturday, and and, uh, and then we got out all this rain coming this week. And so um, stadium lights can be tricky. And so I, I just reached out to him and told him that if they wanted to move it here, they can still wear their home uniforms. They will be the team that gets the gate that uh, our Eagle passes will not work this week. Okay, that was my next and, question. And so uh, it's going to be $10.00. Per person, you know, so even, again, for our students, uh, Eagle Passes will not work. And so, um, but, but yes, uh, and, and so he saw that as a good opportunity to not have that stress of, are we going to get our lights working? Last week at Caldwell, it was Thursday afternoon. 
before they were able to get them working. And uh, so that just adds a lot of stress. And so, uh, again, knowing that the field, they're, they're at General Trask, it was wet, or the electrical truck's going to be able to get in and, and do the things that they need to do and stuff like that. So uh, it just took that pressure off. And, again, they can wear your home uniforms. They can – uh, keep the gate and, and stuff win, like win. that. It, it is. It's a win-win for both of us. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to ask about the Eagle Passes because I was thinking the same thing. You know, they'll they'll uh, they'll be the kind of the – they won't be the host, but they'll be the home team. And uh, and, and so Eagle Passes – Eagle Passes will not work, um, but I guess uh, the parking passes still will. You parking your, passes yeah. and stadium chair back seats, are, were, those are still honored. Okay. All right. Uh, what can we expect from this general trash team? I mean, scheme-wise uh, – you know what? What do you what do you uh, what do you see with this? They're, they're similar to us. A uh, lot offensively, they do a lot of multiple formations. They will line up in ace, which is two tight ends. Uh, they'll line up in empty. Uh, they'll line up, like I say, multiple formations. Uh, they they have several good receivers. A uh, you know six four kid that can go. Mm-hmm. Uh, quarterback uh, Williams is is the kid that he makes things happen. I mean, you get on. Uh, huddle highlights and look at his from last year. He's outstanding. He, he he's the best athlete on the field. I mean, uh, offensively, defensively, he makes things happen. And uh, and so again, they got several other good athletes. Um, you know, they they again a team that he has built that program, and he started from the ground level. So these are kids. Uh, again, he'll have a football camp like our believe and achieve he has that for the youth during the summer uh and and gets those kids uh you know built into the program from elementary through junior high high school uh they have good numbers of over 40 kids and so again coach toriano wells does a great job there and uh he's gonna have his team prepared and, and again you know they they are producing some some very outstanding football players wide out williams uh, starts yeah. for ULM. Player of the um, game, week one. Yeah, for, yeah. For ULM. And, and so he's a product of General Trass, and, and they have several others that are playing college ball somewhere. So, um, again, just we need to, to execute and, and, again, not give up the big play. You know, the so so those are some things we're going to have to do to be successful this week. All right. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for your time and uh, and the information that you could – that you could give us about your, your team and your program. Look forward to Friday night and, and the rest of the season. Eagle fans, I hope you're all there Friday night to watch the game against General Trask, the Panthers, I believe, uh, the, the General Trask Panthers, 7 o'clock, Eagle Stadium, Fitzhugh Field, uh, where we will be the uh, guests uh, on our own turf, and uh, Eagle Passes will not work, but your chairbacks and your parking passes will. They will, and we're going to introduce our, our third oh, uh, through sixth grade football teams uh, at – Halftime, oh, and, so uh, and I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. Okay. That, that's what we're doing this week. We'll introduce them at halftime uh, next week for Del High. That's the senior night, mm-hmm. and um, that that's going to be a night that we're going to try to get all of our teams, kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, that, that we can recognize all of them at, at halftime next week on senior night. And everybody that wears jersey number one, from kindergarten yeah. through 12th grade can meet each other, and everybody wearing jersey number 50 kindergarten through 12th grade can meet each other. So that, that, that's next week. This week we will have third grade through sixth grade out there getting recognition, getting to be on the field on Friday night underneath the lights in that, front of a big cool. crowd. That's going to be cool because I have a fourth grader. So, well, he gets to run yeah, some plays on Eagle Field right. this Friday. Well, they've, done, they've had a good season so far, so they uh, had a game last night. And that's one thing you mentioned, the coach. I, I know we're about to close the show, but – um, Coach Wells over at General Trash having those camps. Well, I mean, if you come up to OCS any night of the week except for Wednesday, there's going to be football games going on probably or football practice, and it's all way, it's all the way down through the third grade. And it's just uh, it's I think it's a great way to build a program. So c- kudos to you, Coach. I think you do a great it job. It takes a lot of people. It does. We're blessed to have have a lot of parents that can can help out. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for your time and uh, Friday night, Eagle fans, um, come on out. I want you to take on the Panthers from from General Trass. And uh, until then, we'll see you next week at the at the uh, McDonald's Weekly Coaches Show. Go Eagles!